Hello guys, sorry I'm back. Hello Brad Tech. Was going to say start streaming early, but 7 p.m. NZ time. Yeah, 7.30! Ah. Yo, yeah, so uh, today I'm just going to uh, basically analyze the games that I played uh, last night. Hang on, I think instead of using my... I'm just gonna do... Oh, actually that's not... Maybe that's not a good idea. Dinner, right? Just looking forward to tomorrow day off. Oh! Oh, okay. That sounds good. Is there a special day tomorrow? Like, is it a public holiday or something? In Australia or... Six to seven days away. Oh, wow! What do you do? That's a very long work week. Well, well, oh, why is it so sticky? Well, at least I get you get a day off tomorrow, which is good. So, uh, okay, let me just check. I think w now we have two people in the stream. 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 You work at bakery Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, local coffee on weekend. Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, local coffee on weekend. Oh wow! Yeah, working in a cafe is really really tough. Hey, eh? uh, you gotta get up really early and uh, gotta wor work long hours and long um you know a lot of days yeah um i never worked in the bakery but uh when i first came to new zealand um, i worked for a restaurant and uh you know just random stuff yeah 2 a.m starts oh my god <laughs> i can barely get up at like nine o'clock in the morning not to mention 2 a.m in the morning man it's crazy, it's crazy. Then again, usually speaking, 2 a.m. is my, uh, I guess, <laughs> I'm still awake at least. But yeah, by the time I reach 4 a.m., man, I'm dead like a cat. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, I think I should get on with it uh, because, uh, you know, I want to do this uh, quick so that I can... Um, because I want to um, play uh, Hitman 47.3 after this. I finally have a normal working schedule. I don't start until 11 a.m. Oh, that's good. That's great, man. 11 a.m. is alright. Yeah. Usually I work, uh, you know, it depends on a semester break or semester, uh, just normal semester. I usually from, I work from 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. Or 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. But right now I'm just doing the 9 to 5, you know, just like you. And the cafe is not even close. Um, okay, yeah, that sounds alright. That sounds alright, man. Alright, cool. I think I should get started. Um, and because, uh, hold on. Let me, let me just get my fan, um, away. Because my room is really hot. Um, uh, I worked for AOT. So I work in the, um, oh, you're asking bread tech? Okay, cool. Okay, let me just get my fan working. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that wasn't directed at you. Uh, so I work uh, for AOT. Um, so basically in the library, it's kind of like uh, uh, Student services. So basically, whoever comes to the library asks any kind of sort of questions. I just answer those questions, and if I uh, I can't answer those questions, I just send them to the right people. Yeah, pretty much like uh, reception in 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 the university. Yeah, sick. I mean, uh, for what for the amount of money I like uh, salary I get for uh, um, I, and what I do. I think it's pretty good. It's not big money, but it's not a tough working environment. It's a uh, pretty comfy, you know. So yeah, it's a it's a it's a good thing, especially you know during COVID right now. Emperor has to answer my question. 
it, it, emperor has to answer my question. How do I get good at Tekken? He can't answer. He has to give me a reference. <laughs> What's this? <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you how to get better at the um, the game. Maybe after hearing my analysis, if I, uh, you know, you just like all of a sudden you'd be like, oh, this is how I get better at Tekken. Maybe you know. <laughs> Yeah, so, all right, Um. right, I'll get started. So anyway, so the very first game I played yesterday was against uh, Makima. Um, okay, now, so the reason I, why I choose Leroy against Makima instead of Fane at start is because, uh, um, I, you know, the previous, previous two, uh, like two days ago, I played against Makima in ranked, right? I played uh, Makima's armor king with uh, uh, both Leroy and Fing. Now, um, I just feel that somehow Makima doesn't deal with Leroy that well. Like he has some good knowledge against Fing, uh, and he has a very scary style. So I wasn't too sure if I could be able to uh, beat Makima in the first two, two. So I thought Leroy would be a good pick because, uh, you know, um, yeah, like I said, I felt that um, Makima doesn't, like, he knows Leroy, but at the same time, he's kind of scared of Leroy. But I didn't know that he was going to pick King. Okay, that was my big mistake. I thought he was going to go straight into Armor King. All right, so um, there was a little bit of surprise. So let's see. Round one. Fight. Okay, look, I start with a down four. Didn't think much of it, but a Makima just back dash out, duck into well Stanley 2 2. That was really good. So I'm just trying to get in and get out and kind of like test what Makima does with King again, because this is not his armor king. So what I know about his armor king doesn't apply here. Okay, I meant you to break that through. There's nothing to say. Here, Makima did a very good choice. Uh, so I did a down back fall into a well crouching fall just to do a little bit of chip damage. So um, he backdashed out and, and whiff punished me with uh, King's uh, up four three. So that was really good. Hello, Tiny Josh. Welcome to the stream. He tries to do it again. I did this because, uh, you see, I did it down three. I hit him, I thought he was gonna get up, but he didn't. So I did the whole thing because um, I stayed there and then canceled. I just wanted to bait him to get up and to get up kick. And he did, and, and I still got caught by it. Okay, I was just trying to, okay. Why did I do, so here, I did a plus one. And why did I do down for one one here? Because, uh, um, in and uh, like on the previous day when I played against uh, Makima, I was using this plus. Uh, so the hermit into four, right? Plus one, and he wasn't challenging or contesting. So I I later on started doing house sweeps. So here I thought Makima would have remembered it, and also uh, of, uh, obviously I'm quite desperate right now. So if I wait for the uh, for the house sweep, I thought wasn't safe. He was probably gonna uh, block it. So that's why I, I checked with the mid. Just get some plus three. Okay, I yeah, I gamble there. Unfortunately, bad angle. And I was trying to wait for his wake up kick, but he did the low. So good stuff from Makima. Round two. Uh, thanks, man. Fight. Again, I start with a low, but you know, I probably shot him half. He went for the... I should have launched him, but I wasn't sure when he was going to stop it. So I thought, okay, one, two, three, oh, sorry, one, two, four would be the better option. If he didn't stop and I went for the big launcher, um, he could have hot picked me. Okay, he did that there. So I didn't go for the house. That, that, uh, I wasn't sure. Early use of K. Thought he was going to interrupt.
I'm so scared to go in as I'm just trying to find the opening. Uh, here it's just I'm trying I keep trying to like back dash, but I think it was a little bit difficult. Uh, first of all, you know, King has got a lot of pluses. Secondly, I, I guess it's partly partially because it's online. So the movement is uh, harder than uh, offline. What? Why are you watching my version of your matches? Why aren't you watching your version? Of, because your version was uh, full of like music and you talking shit, laughing about me, you know? <laughs> uh, thank you, Chipsy for the... Is it the raid or is it the host? Sorry, my my again my uh my stream is set, uh my my stream's default language is Chinese. I should change that to English. Raid, oh thank you so much for the read. I really appreciate that. Made it much better. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe for you. Oh, no moving. Movement is so bad online. Yeah, I said. Like... Fuzzy yeah, as I was explaining myself, it was very difficult. Getting hit by everything. But don't get me wrong, Makima's internet overall is pretty good. It's just, uh, there's always a little bit difference. Fight. So I lost two rounds very quickly, uh, as I often do, because uh, um, the thing about my style is that even though I know my opponent, I still try to test how they play in the first one or two rounds until I get an idea of, okay, this is the timing that I can push some buttons and this is the type of stuff they, they want to do until I get an, an, an idea of what they want to do and what they are unlikely to do. I, I don't want to commit to anything or risk it. So, um, I mean, it depends on how you see it. In the show sets, this is not a very good style. In the long sense, I think eventually this is a very good style. But of course, it still depends on how well I can read my opponent and understand my opponent, adjust myself and adapt to my uh, opponent on the day, you know. Yeah, I do that with myself. Is there a different philosophy? Yeah, exactly, because uh, you don't know, right? Like anyone can hop kick it at any time. If you be like, Oh, okay, he didn't do this last time, so I'm gonna do this now. But then what if they hop kick you, right? And especially it's a first to two. You gotta be extra careful. That is just how I understand. And because I don't have an uh, explosive style, so I don't really know, like, I just don't really know how to, without knowing what my opponent wants to do, and just like, keep the pressure on. Maybe I do that with Jack and, and Brian, but maybe these are the only two characters that I do that kind of stuff. Okay, I did the right punish, at least. And he immediately hits back with the dig jab, very nice. Okay, just unfortunate trade for me. Okay, why do I do this? This is such a classic Leroy setup. So I did down back 1-3 and it's 0. Okay, that's 0, guys. It's not minus, that's completely 0. So if you push a button there, um, you better push a really quick button. And it's a mind game because if you push a button, I can do parry. If you push something slow, then I just can't do this uh, one inch punch. And this move leaves Leroy and his opponent point blank. Unless you backdash, whatever you do, you're not going to get out of this uh, uh, back one plus two situation. It's a classic bait, that's correct. Yeah, you have to size them, or you have to sometimes even size them. You can get caught by the uh, so backdash is the best way. Yeah, yeah. KO. Well, my combo sucks. That's something I really need to work okay. on. Fight. So now I feel a little bit more comfortable. She's trying to do some uh, like frame traps. Okay, here uh, it's a classic king stuff. Four, four, or one. That's very smart. I I guess incorrectly. There's nothing to say about that. I did the spring kick crossover. Now here I I feel like I'm losing. So I'm just I'm just as you see. This is something I learned from Wowza. But the thing is, I didn't. I don't have the good uh, whiff punishment, unlike his. If that was a wowzer, I probably he already have a long stick. Look at here, I was doing trying to bait out his stuff, but instead I was trying to punish him with a back three, but 
uh, I hesitated too much. Tiny Josh would have punished him right away. Am I right, Tiny Josh? Okay, I'm, I'm very dangerous right now. But I think... Okay, again, we're across up. So here I, I've already used my rage drive. My intention was to push him to the wall, but he did some weird flip, flips like the Spalati Samon, the Samon backdash kind of stuff. So Jaguar step. So instead, it, it, it went this way. Could have punished better, but yeah, again, my whip punishment is not the greatest. I think, yeah, I, I told I parry that. Uh, so I died. It was actually a parry. No, I just feel that Makima wasn't like, he was just like scared trying to kill the time. So it was okay for me to go into a house sweep. And I had to do it. If I don't risk it, then I'll, I'll, I'll lose. That's a good name for back. <laughs> yes, Samoan backdash. Okay, here I made a combo mistake. I was going to do full 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 two, but it didn't come out. So instead, I just I just uh uh what do you call it? Co uh uh convert converted to a because he I thought he was gonna stay on the floor, so I just did that. Oh my god! One second. Yeah, it was a very very risky bet, and I I, I guess I was just lucky. Unbelievable. Fight. All right, nice. I, I got a bit uh, excited. I was trying to interrupt him. Uh, I don't know why I did dig jab. It's just panic. Okay, here I did it again because uh, last time he eat it. So it's very likely that he's going to eat it again. I'm pretty sure that he wasn't aware of it because he's running a train right now. So if I did the same setup, if he eats it, that's great. So I kind of saved it. I'm, I'm doing well, Saga. How's going, man? Just trying to analyze my games and trying to uh, present my viewers my thoughts and my, my uh, game strategies and thought process and trying to, uh, um, uh, I guess, show different perspectives and ways of playing uh, Tekken. So obviously I thought he was going to duck. I did a plus frame anyway. Nice. Here I, duck, I tried to go for dig jam and it was very smart of him, but he drops combo. And I just knew he was going to finish me. I thought he was going to finish me with a down four. But he did the 4-4 uh, four, new, four, four neutral 2 into another 4-4 four, four neutral 2. But I just thought that he was going to do 4-4 four, four neutral 2 into a down four. Uh, or uh, you know that king, like the well crouching down four two, That sort of stuff. So I did an orbital. Wasn't exactly the move I was anticipating. But I did the right thing anyway. So that was the rage up to finish it. I didn't want to take any chance. My execution is uh, very bad among oh high level. God. So we go to the second game. I mean, uh, execution is not like the most important thing in a high level Tekken. Nevertheless, you still ha need to have it. My suck execution has cost me a lot of games. Including the ones I played against Saga. I could have taken a lot of rounds, lucky well. but my, my shit combo really like killed me. So guys, you need to at the same time, like you need to have the Arashi, ex uh, sorry, Arashi neutral, but at the same time, having a Belga Johnson's execution is also uh, valuable. Oh, thank you. But obviously neutral is the more important bit. Okay, now this game I got completely destroyed. I don't remember why I got completely destroyed, to be honest. Okay, I didn't break it that. I, I It's supposed to be 1 plus 2. I don't know how to break this. I don't know if I could get up. I just don't know. Leary Strat. I thought my opponent was going to do anything. I did all the all. <laughs> hey, maybe, maybe. <laughs> Now here, uh, look at this one. Not that, not that. Okay, here, uh, uh, well, I intentionally whiffed the first hit. So what usually people do is, oh, they see a whiff, therefore they go for the they go for the wake up kick. Or if they see a whiff, uh, they try to whiff punish you, and they'll get hit by the second move. So it was planned. 
Uh, that was a very smart choice for Makima. So he didn't want to take any wood mix up. So instead, he did the power uh, crush tackle. Oh, okay. If you think the king, I don't really know how to get up, eh? Hello, Shredder. Welcome to the stream. I don't actually know how to like get up. Do I like press up? I tried that, but it, I just didn't get up. In the same situation, the same thing happened. Round two. Fight. Okay, I tried to sidestep and I didn't bl uh, break the shining uh, wizard. Yeah, he delayed it and I got a bit, again, because I was back facing the wall and because Makima has a very, very scary style, I panicked. Uh, didn't guess it correctly. Again. That was it. That was almost it. I ducked again here because I thought he was going to come up with a low. It's guaranteed attempt. Oh, there you go. I thought so. Because I, I'm pretty sure I I pressed a lot of buttons, but I, I didn't do anything. And I, I wasn't sure if I could actually break it. So first time, I think I pressed one. The second time, I don't know if I pressed one or two. But nothing happened. Oh, very smart from Makima. I, I guess it's because I was doing a lot of uh, first game, I was doing back one. Second game, I was doing some one, two highs. And then uh, in the third round, I was doing 1-2 again. So obviously, he caught on my habit of uh, pushing highs at, at the beginning of a round. Uh, and that was a very smart decision for him. Okay, I, uh, I, okay, he, did I, did I win even the round? Maybe not. Uh, yeah, didn't break this throw. I just, I think this, this, yeah, this game I just completely got crushed. Like, there's nothing to say. That's a typical king rush. <laughs> I, I, I lost to a really scary typical king rush down. Really push, push. <laughs> I don't know how to push push against this style, eh? Yeah, I'm actually very scared of uh, this uh, this uh, Makima style. There's a rush down. And he always knows the right button against me. Welcome to the King of Iron Fist Tournament 7. Like, because uh, Makima also always, like, pretty much, uh, always, like, be able to get into, like, the top eight and stuff. Like, down low, how he plays king. I haven't added. It's impossible. Edge Kim Vova, you haven't added me yet. You mean, like, uh, on, on, um, um, on my Steam? Who hooked me, like, on Steam? I don't have a friend request. Send me a friend request, man, or I'll accept you. Four or five games in ranked to uh to kind of like actually get an idea of uh, how he plays Armor King. So King. Yeah, as I explaining, I was I got an idea of uh, how Makima plays Armor King, but um I I think I I only played this King once or twice. So, um, like, I'm not too familiar with how Makima plays King. Alright. Anyway, let's try. So, yeah. So this means uh, with Fing, I still need to test how Makima plays. Because even though like, I got an idea for Leroy, right? But Fing and Leroy's style is very different. So I still need to know my spacing against his King. And what moves I can do and what not. So uh, I was gonna point out here, okay? Uh, not 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 here, not here. Okay. So I did this because uh, most people will try to get up and size it, but uh, um, Makima choose to again arm across the road. That's something I never predicted. Yeah, yeah, I was. So technically, if uh, if uh, if uh, Makima reported me, I would have been DQ'd from the very first game. Okay, I hear I did this because I thought uh, I thought Maki was gonna get up and do some stuff, or uh, he was gonna get up and button. Okay, I'll try to do back turn and like full full back turn, but it got counter there. So I finished the whole thing, tried to do the up four two setup, but I didn't. I like honestly, I I I, I really didn't guess that Makima would have uh, gone for the ten string. Oh, not ten string, but this thing. And I, I don't know why I got hit there. Round two. Maybe it was guaranteed? I don't know. 
Okay, I tried to whiff punish that, but this one I was just moving. I wasn't ducking. Okay, I should have a dig jib there. Like, there's no reason to dig jib. Again, that's just a panic button. Like, I, I think I can't dig jib the mid and the low it's not gonna not gonna interrupt, so uh, yeah. He gets the mid if all hit. Yeah, oh. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah, so it was guaranteed. Nice, nice uh, uh, reaction from uh, Makima. I mean, it, by this point, I was like, this must be his. I'm probably gonna lose this one. That's a mistake. I didn't, I don't remember what I was trying to do, but it wasn't a desperate while sending three. I never do that. That's a mistake. That must be a mistake. I don't remember what exactly I did though. Fight. Okay, I guess I got the mix up. I got a punish, which is nice. I think Makima now changed to a bit more risky style because why not? He got two rounds and final round, if he does something surprising like hop kick here and there, if, if he ca catches me, then I'm dead, right? But because, but the thing is, the whole time I was uh, I was scared of that. So every so every round I was thinking of, okay, uh, this is king. If a king player hop kicks or grabs, I gotta watch out. So I was very very aware of the hop kicks. So I don't think I took any of it. And here I punished this. Um, I think that's just optimal punish. Yeah, that was uh, desperate. Okay, again, I couldn't break that, so I took the whole thing. I think here I tried to get up, but... I don't know why I can't get up. Yeah, cock it. Nice. A mistake. That That's a mistake. I was trying to do up forward too, but then it came out as a up two, and somehow Makima was actually doing a low. So that was, oh my god, that was lucky as fuck, man. I'm not happy about that. I mean, if I did up forward two, it's probably gonna counter him anyway, but yeah, I mean, I'm not happy with because that wasn't what I was originally planned in. I didn't read his low. Uh, mistake. But nonetheless, I got 50 damage from that. It's just. What can I say? Okay, here I'm very dangerous. Yeah, but I, I guess I keep my composure. I wasn't trying to do the blue uh, shoulder, but... Mistake. Okay, I was trying to parry. I thought he was gonna finish with the low. I'm not sure why Makima would do that there. What the hell is that? I, th I think he panicked. Final round. So that kind of made me a bit more comfortable because I thought I was I was gone. Okay, comes with my he got in, I got clipped. Suck combo. Okay, that's a bait. And I'll try to do one three. I don't know why I did back one. Uh, yeah, I thought that throw was coming, eh? Cause surely this time was gonna be the throw. Oh my god, I wasn't happy with uh I think Makima really really should have uh, have uh, beaten me, but uh, but I think uh, yeah, the the previous round he got a little bit desperate and I just managed to keep my composure and that's why I I I guess I made a comeback. So like guys, composure in competition is so important because if you keep your head cool, your opponent uh, even though they might have a health lead, they might actually get desperate. This is something I've been trying to train myself. Uh, I find that every time I go to a competition, my first game is always very shit because I'm always so nervous. My hands are shaking, my brain is not working properly. Only after a game or two, then I start like, oh, okay, okay, uh, now I'm playing like myself. So uh, if, if you guys can like keep your composure, from the very beginning on, that'd be awesome. That's something I'm trying to improve on myself as well. Uh, show the quota water. You won't, that's the main thing. Yeah, I guess so, I guess so. Oh, I did add you. Okay, thanks, man. Yeah, I was laughing myself, you know. Okay, so um, second game, I was uh, up against Shredder. Uh, I think the game games we played was very epic and very interesting. So let's analyze.
<sighs> Marduk? Okay, uh, first of all, I thought he was going to use Leroy. Uh, I don't know what ex why exactly he chose Marduk, but I choose Fane mainly because, uh, well, I don't want to, uh, I, don't, I don't really particularly uh, prefer Mirror Match, and also I just thought, nah, my Leroy wasn't like doing well that day, so let's just go with Fane. Your reads are quite accurate though. Is it through experience? Hi Ben, uh, Mido47. So my, my reads are usually not only through my experience, but from the testing. So I pay attention to what people do, and I do certain stuff to test what they do. Once I get a read on them, I usually save it to the moment where I think now it's the critical moment to cash it in. I cash it in early on with small things, but the biggest read I have, I always save it to whenever I really need to use it. But this is a downfall. When I and you was you will you will hear me explaining this when I get to Saga. I save something to the last moment, but I didn't get a chance to use it because I died before I anticipated. Um so yeah. But I think a lot of Tekken players they don't have the concept of uh, testing the opponent, don't have the concept of paying attention to what their opponent does uh, because they're too busy with what they do. They don't pay attention to what the opponent is doing. So um, if you pay too much attention of what you are doing, you will have a very strong style for sure. But end up, if you play against someone who's really good at adaption, eventually in long set you will lose because you only know what you're doing, but you don't know what your opponent is adapting to. Whereas if you are trying to adapt to your opponent, you might have a slow start, but eventually it will benefit you in the long run. Does that make sense to you? I will explain more uh, while I'm going through uh, this matchup. You see a lot was from my read, a lot of from my experience. Now, I've played Shida a, a lot. Uh, recently, so I kind of know how he plays, and obviously he knows how I play. Uh, this is a mistake. It was supposed to be a uh, a one plus so the headbutt, but came out as the two. I never do that. So I, I I did break a couple of throws. I didn't anticipate that. That was very smart, and that that was very smart. He did this to me previously, but I didn't think he was gonna do it that quickly. So I got up. And uh, as soon as he grabbed me, I was like, okay, okay, I gotta be careful. I think it was a pretty convincing first round to him, right? Yeah, pretty sure, pretty sure. And again, I, I, I wasn't to worry too much about losing my first round. Uh, I, I think my name stands for losing my first round or first possibly game or even first set. It's not surprising that I lose my first round, first game. Because uh, I just need that time to kind of get used to it. Round two. Fight. Okay, I just wanted to do down for and then check what he does. But again, he, he did the big low start, so that was unexpected. I ducked. I, I tried to fuzzy, but... So now I tried to attack a bit. Because I was like, I'm not going to let him... I tried to fuzzy, but I wasn't, wasn't doing the right thing. I'm not... not gonna let him slowly push me towards the wall. And Mother does a lot of damage, so if I don't push back slowly, it'll be end up like the first game, the first round. You know, it's already half gone after taking what, three hits? Okay, I wasn't pressing the button, I just wanted to see what he does. And try to bait him in instead of uh, buttoning. Okay, I, I was trying to pl uh, punish with shoulder, but again, uh, my execution. I think I pressed too fast. So he was trying to um, get me in, but I just didn't go in. My game plan against everyone that day was to be as patient as possible. That's uh, um, an info mistake. This is no offline, so... Fight. Okay, very nice, very nice. I like it. Uh, he didn't break the break the floor. I'm not sure exactly why. I thought he was gonna break the floor. So again, I wasn't just uh, I I just wanted to be cautious, so I didn't press a button. So he did the uppercut, maybe thinking that I was gonna button. So that's why I punished. Um, 
10 string, I didn't finish it. Again, 10 string is actually a mind game. Mistake, again. Okay, here I could have ducked it, but I did it down back three because uh, I guess I wanted to, I wanted to counter him with, uh, with the down back three. I thought it was going to be a counter, but it wasn't a counter, it turns out. So, all right. So harassing him with a couple of blows, uh, unfortunate uh, uh, stake dash got caught. I knew he was going to do something, that's why I rushed the 1-2 jab there. I guess that was a bit of a nice patience from me, and should have thought I was going to keep the pressure on by pressing button, so he did the down 1 plus 2. Fight. Okay, I got it. Okay, here, look at this. Look at this. So I got a counter. I went back to parry him. Do you know why? Because the long sets I played against him, they were, uh, the very first game I played against him, same stage, exactly the same situation, except I was at the wall. That was from like a few days ago. I did a down back three. I, I tried to do uh, back turn three, and he did a wake up kick. He did a wake up kick, and he countered me. He managed to make a comeback from that, uh, from that wake up kick. So this time I knew he was used to gonna use the same strap, and that's through my experience. So I did this. I turned back and I straight went into low parry, and I was right. Then I did a very shit combo. I did the right punish. Nice parry from Shredder. Okay, here is a bit of tricky. I eat the first one. When I got up, I was pretty sure Shida was going to do another one. So what I did was I tried to go get up and hop kick, but nothing came out. I guess I didn't have enough frame. Then I tried to get up and rage out, but again, no frame. Get up, I rage out. Nothing. And, uh, wrong guess. So that was a bit unfortunate, but that was a very good comeback from Mada, from Shida. Okay, I don't... So now I'm just trying to, ah, uh, mistake, nice, I ducked, didn't break the tackle, and obviously I guess incorrectly, so he was watching how I break, that was very desperate of me, so um, that was a very smart thing for Shredder to do, and he went for the tag pro catch, which he did give me a couple of times when we first uh, started playing the game, um, like before, but uh, um, then I stopped like getting up this way, so he stopped doing it. Now he thought, okay, must be long enough. I forgot about that. So he did that. And yes, I, I did forget. Yeah, wake up uh, uh, button wasn't the correct option. But it didn't cool. I thought I could get away with uh, a rage up, but uh, no. King of so the reason I choose a, a no war stage is that, you know, it's very funny. I used to be a person that likes to keep the pressure on and, and, and like no war, like small war stage. But my style has changed since uh, late, uh, like season two a lot. So now I find that a lot of times without war, I can actually play the spacing game and slowly, slowly get an idea of how my opponent play and find openings and wait for them to come in. Uh, with wars, I just I die too quickly, so and I don't particularly find things strong uh, with war pressure anymore. So I feel like I win quite a bit without war, and I lose quite a bit with wars. Mother and Zafina. Okay, so I choose no war, and I know that Shredder likes to um, kind of uh, rush me down a bit, and also it's Mother. So if I don't give him the spacing to tackle me. It's gonna benefit me a lot. Fight. Okay, I, I, I guess I break the uh, tackle that's plus one for me. He whiffed that, so I punish. Oh, okay. Just exchange your blows. So here, yeah, that, that's a, I think that's a pretty good whiff punish for me because uh, from the previous game, I see that uh, he, he tries to get me with the uppercut a couple of times. So I, I was paying attention to uppercut. I start paying attention to uppercut. I didn't break, oh, that. I break that. Okay, 
Again, I was paying attention to, uh, you know, uh, any whiffs, any uppercut whiffs. Fight. Okay, he's trying to kick me away, and if I come in, he's probably gonna do something. So I, w I just wanted to see he kicks me away. Then what he's gonna do? What's his setup? Or was he? What? What does he want? To I'm not sure what his intention was, but I wasn't gonna press the button or go in just to see what Shredder's intention was. Nice. That was a very, uh, very, very nice. Caught me, uh, like four, four back. Okay, he went into sidestep. I think I should uh, does like to with the Leroy some uh, same thing. Sometimes he does something into sidestep into launcher. I mean, it's safer with uh, Madak, so it's all good. But I, I just didn't Madak. Here I test him because uh, Madak is a big character. He cannot duck and get away with the uh, back turn hop kick. But I see that he's not ducking. So guess what? Now it's time. So I did the low. So I just try to even up the health as much as I can. And I just saw him coming in, so I react and, and did a shoulder. Yeah. And I guess he got a little bit uh, like, he wants to finish me off quick. So I used that and did this. He whiffed again? Whiffed again. I guess I baited the spacing out. So now I'm kind of like going in and harassing him. And that's just another whiff punishment. So I need to duck that streak. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's very actually very hard to duck that streak. I haven't seen a single person that managed to dust, uh, duck that stream yet. Yeah, I think uh, that uh, this one was... Uh, Kind of like the last round, I kind of started going in a bit because I thought, okay, this is the last round. Now it's time for me to uh, to cash in on some of my reads and harass him with a, a couple of uh, things that I think is going to hit him. You win. So, yeah. I need to keep my composure. And again, no, yes, it's right. I need to co keep my composure. I, I, if I can I, keep my composure, walk, I can play well. If there's no walk, then 50-50. Thank you. I'm yeah, thank you, man. I'll try my best to beat uh, beat him in the next one. He probably gonna choose a really small stage. I, I I thought he was gonna choose a small stage. Guess what? He chose the smaller stage. I hate that stage. The dragon's nest. I hate it. When did they call out the costume? I uh, I only know they call it out after I finished the game. I went in to report my game, and that's where I got called out. I don't know actually. I like the Leroy music, but ah, uh, okay. Because I turned the background music it's not off. Be easy. It's not gonna be easy. Sorry, I just wanna uh, adjust my fan. Especially forced to two. Uh. As I expected, smallest stage. Okay, let's go. Okay, so let's analyze this one. Round one. Fight. Okay. Yeah, I try to I, I try to play the mind game because he he swept me down with the down back four. I was trying to do a mid. Um um I just thought that he might get up and do something, but obviously that was my mistake. But he didn't, like, he made a mistake as well, so he couldn't combo off it. Okay, I did this because I just wanted to keep the pressure up. And because he leaves a little bit of gap. But if he did any uppercut or anything, I would have died. But I think he, he did something like 1-2 or whatever. But with 1-2, the thing is, Fing's back 1 has a weird high crush status. It treats with jab. It, when it treats with jab, it always goes to Fing. So, um, it's a good situation for Mada wake up three after bat by four. Yeah, I think so. So that was actually very stupid of me of doing that. So, um, but unfortunately you didn't, you couldn't combo off it. If you did combo off it, the situation would have been very different. So here I did the back one just because I know back one has weird, uh, 
crash in status, and by the time he comes in, he's probably gonna gonna eat it. If I if I he if he uppercut me, then that's fine. I die. I think Jim he guessed very correctly. I missed the punish on this one, and that's actually a uh, I think that's actually a punish, and that's a big damage. I thought I uh, like parry this one, but no, not enough afraid. Okay, I did this because uh, I was being I I have been doing only uh, forward four forward, back right. I never did this uh, uh, to to him in this uh, in the, in in the entire two games. So I thought let me just try see if he eats it. That's just uh, I guess another thing I do like because if you see me always doing one string, I never do the second string. Then sometimes people will get lured into full security and they might press a button. A lot of people press uh, against things uh, four, four, three. It's an ancient setup, but from time to time it still works. And that's guaranteed. That's fifty damage, like forty nine or something. So it's good damage, and it's only minus ten. Okay, I guess nice patience from me. I get the ten string. I did the mid there. No, I'm not pressing. Okay, he goes for this, and I knew it. I knew this was coming. That's why I immediately went into get up and hawk it. If he was going to do another vortex, which is low, that's fine because I can still get up and hop kick. The only thing he could have done to, I guess, either bait my hop kick out or do a mid, but it'll be a trade, I suppose. So there's no reason not for me to do that hop kick. So um. Or headbutt, right? What what's the headbutt? Oh, oh the this, hey, this. It'll float me, is that right? Oh, the, uh, this one, hey. It then it'll float me, am I right? Or maybe you could do a welcoming one into float me. Or something like that. Yeah, I'll get hit, yeah. But I was like hundred percent sure it was the tackle. Call the circle uh encroaching down for one, two. It's a very strong situation. Ah, I see, okay. Yeah, I guess I just took a bit of gamble there. I was just, for some reason, I was 100% sure that it was a tackle coming. But yeah. Fight. Okay, counter again. This time I knew he wasn't going to do the, um, he wasn't going to do the while standing uh, like three because I parried him. What I thought was he was gonna do while standing four. That's why I did the sweep. Because if he did while standing four, he will get sweeped. But he just stay on the floor. But that's fine. As well as I stay on the floor, I still get the sweep. Did I break it? I broke it, yes. I wait for the side step four because he wasn't ducking the down four or three. So here I intentionally whiff the first one for him to whiff punish me because he's a good player. He tries to whiff punish and guess what? He gets killed, hit by the second uh, move. That's the, my whole intention of it. Mistake? I was gonna do a headbutt. Did I break it? I broke it. Nice. Nice. Yeah, so uh, up forward, the two always, you know, it saves me my life uh, most of the situation. And um, it's always an advantage for me to at least size it this way, but usually people won't do that. Round four. Fight. Yeah, I thought this was coming. So I committed to ducking. Okay, I waited a bit just to see if he ducks, but he got up, he got up. So that's fine, that's fine. I did the. I did the dick jibs and stuff. Trade, yeah. And then parry. Okay, I whiffed this. Uh, that wasn't intentional. That wasn't intentional. I thought he was gonna stay on the floor uh, or coming in, but I whiffed it. So he comes to grab me. My my natural instinct tells me, oh, I whiffed. What do I do? Dick jib. Like because <laughs> that's I guess the safest thing I could have done. So um, that's uh, that's how I won the round. Yeah, I um, I mean, I think both of us played well. So yeah. Uh, okay. 
So the next one I played against uh, um, J J Sa Kim or J S A Kim J Sa Kim, another strong player from uh, Christchurch, uh, a Korean uh, a Korean uh, player. He he means uh, Claudio. Okay, now I never fought this person before. I ever fought him with uh, I think his. Miguel or something with my Jin, right? In the in the chocolate uh, chocolate uh, challenge, it was just for fun. Um, um, so uh, I never fought him in competitions. I never fought him with Faye. So again, I needed to test him. Round one. Fight. Yes, it was really good to watch. Thanks, man. So I needed to test him. So I was very reserved, as you can see. Uh, I didn't go up and then immediately attack after he does this uh, because what what does the Claudio players do after this? I tell you, the Claudio players usually do how uh, do hop kick, down by three, or into another one, or just a jab one three. You know what I mean? It's a setup for um, for for Claudio players. They never don't attack. So I wasn't sure what exactly he was gonna do. Um, so instead, I I meet, I, I intentionally go in. Just wait. I want to see. I want to bait something out. See what he does. You know what I mean? But he didn't do anything. So I was like, okay, fine. But um, just because he didn't do anything this time does not mean he did, he won't do it next time. So I'm I'm still gonna check check him until I'm sure. Okay, I didn't my mistake. Yeah, I know, right? I you agree? Yes. I'm up plus, but I was so scared to push because I'm not sure if he's gonna hop kick. So instead, I just wait. And see what he does. I should have a whiff punishment, but again, I was being cautious. See? Did you see that he did this? Now he was trying to he was trying to duck into a launcher. But I did one three because the three will catch him, but not because I anticipated he was gonna uh, duck. Because the one three is generally safe. He can't hop kick me there anyway. If he hop kicked, he will get caught by my three. So, so I guess he just Fink has a very nice one three. So I'm doing the mid. That mid is gonna like beat everything. Okay, he did. Uh, he he hop kicked right or or orbit or something. Typical Korean player. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Okay, very nice. Now I tried to do a low, as you can see, he sized it into Hopkin. Take a note of that. Because later on I was trying to uh See he did this twice. I just went in and I, I wasn't blocking properly. No dash guarding. Yeah, I mean okay. May people might be, might be asking, so I didn't see anything. Why do I even do this, right? Okay, I tell you why I do this. First of all, this is a punch parry. If he did do a punch, right? I would have a, a punch parry him. Secondly, it tracks. Thirdly, max range, it's safe now. So there's almost no risk for me to do this. There's almost no risk for me to do this. So um, I do it as a test. Nobody ever call me out on that. Nobody ever like interrupt me with uh, anything. They at best, they, they block it. Mo most of the time, they either get caught, or they can't punish me, or they just freeze and don't know what to do afterwards. So there's no reason for me not to do it. Bad range. Nice orbital. That was a guess. I was trying to parry the the, two, the low high, but he did the high low. Fight. I was trying to bait him to do the, the leaping punch. I, I was trying to bait the leaping punch, not this one, but he did this one, it's a high, so same thing. Mm, execution. Okay, nice. A bit of a push push. Okay, I, again, I was trying to bait him to do something. If he, if he, like, but because he's back facing the wall very dangerous situation for him i was charging in so most people would have done something if they did it'll be a big big combo for me 
But he, he was patient. Very smart. As you can see, I'm still quite cautious. Not over committing to anything right now. And he is actually very cautious as well. He's not like doing anything random. Or uh, risking anything. Yeah, but that, that last one was a risk, right? I didn't punish, I just went for a down two. Because it would have killed. I wasn't exactly prepared for his hop kick. I was prepared for something. Again, let's try to test. There you go! I knew it was coming! This is setup! I knew, you know, it bound to happen! All that wait and check was worth it. Okay, this, there was just a, a, again, spacing and baited something out. So as you can see, like, keep checking your opponent. You might be like, oh, why are you keep checking? Why are you keep checking? Because if you don't check, if you, if they do a hot pick on you, you lose like 30, uh, like 40% of your health. Carry to wall, you lose like 50%. If they have rage, you lose like 70%. So you can you just have to be careful. This is the nature of Tekken 7. You gotta be really careful, careful, and careful. So, yeah. And I understand why people try to hop pick and everything, because why not? It's so rewarding, right? So if you don't play this style, then you just have to be really careful. So it's either way. You're gonna be either, you, you're, 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 you're really good at like having this a risk kind of like high risk and high reward style or if you want to play safe then you just gotta keep checking your opponent remember what their pattern is remember when to cash in and things like that and you have to have a good spacing as well you gotta be able to bait things out and be and being able to punish them okay so that's the second game Fight. Now, why am I doing a, a why am why did I do a homing move here? Because remember, I I told you guys to pay uh pay attention. So, Jason Kim, one round he did size them into a hop kick. So this time I was expecting him to hop uh, to size it and wait and see me with and do a hop kick, because I thought okay now uh we've already played like. From where he did the size them into a hop kick, it's already two uh, like two rounds already. Actually, two or three rounds already. Now he's probably gonna size them into a hop kick again. So that's why I was like, yeah, yeah, it's time to do a do a homing move at the start. But no, actually, he he thought exactly the same thing. So he did the homing move, except his one was faster than mine, so he counted me. Nice. He got it a bit uh, like, I guess greedy because he was on minus. He pushed the big button there. Again, I we both were just trying to spacing and get a... Here, I, I kind of delayed it a bit, so I got a counter for him. Notice I never go in and immediately do something. I always go in and go out to like kind of change my timing a bit. So if he push a button, I, I will have uh, enough, like, I, I can just backdash out in time. And unlikely to, uh, or most unlikely to get caught by anything random. And, and at the same time, being able to block and punish. Or to do that kind of stuff and bait him in. That's guaranteed. That's guaranteed. Round two. Fight. So it was a juggle. Here, he did a very good thing. He sized it into half kick. So um, I wasn't like, I haven't got into the auto block frame. So that was very good. Nice one carry. But he drops the combo again. Nice. That was very smart. I sized it from him. Now this time I choose to do a, because I just wanted to get out the wall. He did a magic fall and caught me. Not sure if he was intentional. He read that. Or, or why he did the... Maybe because he thought I was going to do the 1 plus 2. So the magic 4 will counter me. So anyway, it was a smart decision for him. Ha. 
So I just tried to like get my lead back, but KO. he blocked the headbutt, so there was nothing I could do. Round three. Fight. Bit of plus three. Time to cash in. Big damage. Knew he was gonna um, wake up kick, but I didn't know it, it, you know it, it was going to be a trade. But I mean, to my advantage, as you can see as well. So back turn, I thought, okay, I'll do another low. He's not gonna duck, I do another low, but he duck, did duck. And he countered me. But, you know, it, it wasn't in a good com uh, position for him. Fight. I don't I don't know why I can't duck the second hit, eh? I pushed the button. Forgot about that move. Okay, delay, yeah. Button there. I tried to do this uh, on him as well, but he didn't push a button. But he didn't punish me anyway. So no consequence for me. So I did the... Uh, I thought it was a counter, but it wasn't. But noticing that he wasn't punishing me... I should have ducked. Okay, he, he went for a hop kick but got caught by my by my well standing one. Mr. Juggle again. I delayed again. He wasn't gonna punish me. Again, he didn't punish. Plus, and I went for my classic dig jib low finish. So um yeah. So that that was the game against uh Jaysa Kim. Um now the final game I played was against Saga. Saga is a very very strong uh, player. Like he's kind of like he's not exactly new, but he's still like he doesn't go to offline very often. Only started going to offline um, like recently. That dig jab into low is unexpected when I first played you. <laughs> now you're pretty much expecting it every single time. Am I right? <laughs> Uh, JDCR finish. Yes, thank you, man. Yes, it is a JDCR finish. I am flattered. Now, Saga, Saga is very patient and he's very talented. I can tell you that Saga is very talented and he's a smart player. The only reason he, like, obviously in this tournament he did really well, but in the past, he, he never performs well. He never performed well in competitions. I think it's because of his nerve. I, I've always said this. If he could conquer his nerve, okay, he could become, he has the potential to become a very, very strong player in New Zealand. Potentially one of the top players competing in top four. Um, and and I, I guess I was right, right? I mean, here, he, uh, he, he came like second in this competition. Hello, Shahanese. Welcome to the street. Okay. Now notice that I'm actually quite comfortable with this matchup, but but um, I haven't fought his Steve for so long. A couple of movement, my mistake. Not very crisp, so I got clipped here and there. I used a new combo, which I shouldn't. I'm not very good with this uh, stage. I never pl practice on this stage for some reason. So every time I get this stage, I'm quite bad with the combos. I'm not doing any optimal combos. Okay, now Saga also is a patient player. So we're just trying to spacing each other out, not over committing to anything. Just trying to get something, like trying to find any openings. He went in, so I... Finally, I break the floor, but that's a very shit combo anyway. Get some plus, and he's a Steve. And he's a Steve. What else could he have done? You know what I'm saying? The punch berry works on Steve. He doesn't have a kick. Yeah, and, and I went for... Okay, now, I think I exclusively did back turn mid. Every single time I did back turn mid. And there's a reason why, because I wanted to cash in. In the very, very last game, last round, I wanted to cash in, but unfortunately he killed me unexpectedly. I was conditioning him only with mid, because I know he is very, very good at ducking. Round two. So my whole plan was mid, 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 no mix up. One, two. 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 
Okay, um, high crush me, nothing to say. That's very good execution. So he, after well standing 1-2-1, one, one, he did the, uh, I don't know the command, but you know, typical the worst splat thing, right? I paid attention to that. And I'll tell you why later. Okay, size the four, he didn't duck it. Nice break, if he didn't break it, that's it. Breaks the floor, and that's it. Okay, here, did you see that? I don't know why this was uh, like max range. I didn't know this was thing too, I had a max range. Especially when Fink has a monkey arms. Okay, very nice. He caught me coming in. Round three. Fight. Okay, uh, I, I, this is something that I'm not prepared for. Power crush. Because uh, I haven't fooled the uh, Steve player that there's a lot of power crush. Uh, and also, I don't remember Saga using this in the past. So that's something new. Nice punish, nice whiff punish from Saga. Didn't get baited in. Instead, waited to uh, punish me. Of course! <laughs> Up for two. Okay. Just as you can see, both of us were just playing. Okay, I did a reversal there because he, he hit me with a while sending to one. But instead, he did a low, so very smart. I could have punch parried that one. Oh my god, my bad combo. I wasn't sure. Like I wasn't sure. I thought I I I, I thought I um like I, I thought the down for one couldn't have hit him. I thought I missed it. I wasn't ready for it. So I was only doing mids, as you can see. Man, I was trying to do another low, but he caught me with yeah, they're very nice. There's nothing. It's just uh, down to that little, yeah, and he, he managed to jack it out. Uh, now, I won't stream Hitman because I want to actually concentrate. Uh, well, I, I Usually, I only do like Tekken, or maybe in the future, when I when I finish the game, then when, when I, feel, uh, I feel like to, then I'll stream my Hitman. But, but when I play my Hitman, I actually want to concentrate. Uh, was it the optimal combo? I probably not. Again, I was doing mid. I was pretty sure I was gonna take this uh, this round, but he managed to to, to make a okay uh, mistake. I was gonna do one plus two, but I think I hold it back a bit too long, so it became a shoulder. He, he just caught the timing. Up forward two caught, caught me uh, coming in. Very smart. And I was going to like use the up forward two to get out, but he he did the he did the unblockable. So there's nothing I can do. It's like he told Jet up hurt me. Yeah. So uh, very strong showing from um, Saga. There's nothing much to say about it. He just caught on the timing and made the right decisions at right time, had the execution. That's what strong player is about. Right. You read, you have the spacing, uh, you, you have the execution. I go for the in, uh, infinite stage again. I mean, I don't think anyone would say Finn versus uh, Steve, uh, a war stage will benefit Finn. It's obviously going to benefit Steve. I, I tried to not play with music just because uh, um, but I'm playing, but uh, I think it's impossible. Round one. Fight. I start with the back four. See, the same situation. I, last time I did a shoulder by mistake. What I was trying to do was this one plus two because again, like I explained, one plus two at max main range is safe because it's only ten frame, but a lot of jabs doesn't reach, and it's a punch parry. And if you sidestep or duck, then you get counter. 
And shoulder is actually guaranteed, except that I can't do it online. No consequences for me. Caught him sidestepping, I knew he was gonna sidestep. Wasn't gonna push a button, I was just trying to bait him out. Bait his back one, bait whatever he's going to do. And, and there's no way to whiff on his Steve, so don't even try to whiff on his Steve. Just spacing him out and then jab him or low him. You don't whiff on his Steve. Steve is a top character for a reason. Again, see that? I don't know how this missed. I didn't know that could possibly miss. But I mean, it wasn't a big factor, but I'm just saying that we're surprised. And he came in and eat my uh, 404 back. That's exactly what he wanted to do. I just using 2-4 and see what, what he does. Okay, I use this to test him because it's okay, it's Steve. I don't have to worry about it because uh, Steve can't launch me. I, I see, uh, um, here. Well, after Wild and Wine 2, he went for that down forward 2 again, right? So, what's that cavalry? So, next time I did a punch parry again, and he went for the low again. So, that was very smart. Every time he changes, uh, changes moves, he's not unconsciously doing some stuff without thinking. See that? He's not like unconsciously doing the same stuff without thinking. He actually has the mind games. He does the different stuff every single time. Again, I did miss. Oh, very, very, very nice parry. That's just the Saga software initiated. Round three. Fight. And you see what I don't like? I I'm, I hesitate to do. Okay. Here I baited, I finally fucking baited a back one out. And thank god I did the right combo. Did you, oh, okay. I did the mid, but he didn't interrupt. And it punished me, so good, very good. As you can see, our games are actually very, very slow. Very nice. Saga software initiated again. Oh, that was very lucky of him. But then he went to overexcited. So fresh Saga. <laughs> he is. Hey, he's a young kid, you know? Okay, here, you know, you know, this is interesting, right? Now, technically, I'm a minus, uh, minus 10, but I've used this strat over and over and just never fails me because technically it is minus 10. But look how big a gap that leaves my me from my opponent. My opponent runs in. By the time they run in, they've already a lot. Look, 10 frame is what? One six of, uh, one six of a second, okay? Takes about what, 20 uh, frames to run in, maybe, or even one second, I don't know. Like by the time he runs in, they lose their turn. So I, I knew he was gonna come in, and he's a 1-3. And if he doesn't like, uh, if he blocks, so what, I'm safe. And I only have uh, nine seconds left. There's absolutely no consequence for me to do that 1-3. Round four, fight. <laughs> That? And uh, yeah, lots of uh, mids. Now this is actually a punish. Uh, well, kind of he ran it. And mid, 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 low mid. As you can see, I did lots and lots of mid in back turn, and in size the one plus two because uh, I was planning for the next game when I needed. I was gonna throw out all the back turn mix up, back turn low, size step four. I just didn't get a chance. So there you go, saving to the end is a good thing. So conditioning your opponent, not only testing, not only paying attention to what they do, but actively conditioning your opponent is another strategy I use very frequently, especially against uh, 
like good players. Um, and uh, especially if uh, I know my opponent, okay? Or also, if you have a long set, like three sets, five, five games, then you can take time to uh, condition your opponent. Now, if you have only first to two or even first to one, forget about it, forget about it. So conditioning is another strat. As you can see, I'm stressed out because the Saga, he's, he's, a, he's a very strong player. He's not like easy Welcome or anything. That's a direct strong trying to cheer, like trying to encourage me to win. Unfortunately, I failed him. Oh, okay. Sorry, okay. That's the final, final game. I, um, okay, here I was just trying to do uh, two, uh, two, four, one. Uh, he moved then, if he moved, he got caught by the four, then he, he gets the, so one is natural combo, unless I delay. Again, I wasn't trying to, like, uh, in order for Saga not to parry my lows, I had to really, really, be careful not every time go in and like if I have a fair advantage therefore I go for a low or mid that's not gonna work on um, Saga sometimes you're just gonna give up your turn and make him to think oh what the hell why is he giving up my turn um, the, his turn that's the only way to hit him with uh, lows that he's unable to block now I got up and did a dump back three I tried to do another low because surely he wasn't going to expect three lows in a row but I got caught by back one God knows how. <laughs> and I had to. I thought he was gonna come up with a low, but he come up with a mid. So yeah, it's a 50-50, pure 50-50. Nothing I can do. I have to guess. See that? Why? Because a uh, max range. I uh, well into is gonna whiff. And remember the previous two games. I did lots of uh, one plus two. And he, he was doing 1-1-2. One, one, I tried to duck 1-1, one, one, and when I get up, I either block, and unintentionally block the 2, or I get hit by the 2. So this time, I was going to use that and wait for the 1-1-2 one, one, to completely whiff. Combo drop. Yeah, that is such a Rambo thing to do. Okay, now, I, 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 I have to say that I was a bit lucky here, because, look, I did the charge up. I was hoping to, like, he was going to keep doing the back one straight, right? But he stopped. But I, I guess I'm on very big plus. I'm on plus five. So, but he still did, like, one. He was supposed to hit me with it, as you can see. But for some bloody reason, <laughs> it just kind of, like, missed, missed my shoulder, right? I think I was a bit lucky there. So I caught him with a 2-2. Two -two. What about if you have not much matchup knowledge about your opponent? Does the testing and conditioning still apply? Look, if you don't know much about your uh, your opponent, the testing and conditioning still applies. But if you don't have a matchup knowledge against a specific character, then it will be a big problem. Because you, first of all, you gotta know the character. Then you gotta learn the behavior of how your opponent play this character. If you have completely no knowledge of this character, you just don't know what to do. If you got into a, a fight where you don't know your character, then my best suggestion is that just pressing a lot of buttons, try to keep the play, try to force your opponent to play your game rather than trying to understand how your opponent play and and play their games because it's impossible. Does that make sense? But you should always try to get enough matchup knowledge. One worst thing to do, one one most stupid thing to do is go into a fight without the knowledge of your opponent's character. Like that I learned this through the hard way. I always lose to I used to lose to opponents like maybe they're not as good as me, but because I don't know their character, I lose very badly. So yeah. So I guess I got a bit lucky there. And I don't really know why I missed that juggle. My again my my execution sucks. Saga, uh, 
I initiate the low parry again. I guess I did a lot of lows uh, and, and similar situations. So I was doing mid. See, I was still doing mid there. Why? Because I'm not going to risk it and do a low now. Because he only have like this much health left. I was ready to do a big sweep on him when we get to the final round. Unfortunately, I never went to the final round. <laughs> I, I, I thought he was gonna do the soul you can, so I wasn't gonna dig yet. Fight. Okay, this this particular round, I I didn't control properly. My spacing was a little bit off. Okay, nice. He hits back, so I immediately go to again. I did uh, I did mid again. I was just still trying to condition him. Mistake, but that's all right. I was trying to, and he went for the power crush. That's just something new. I don't like this power crush is really interesting. I need to lap this power crush. I don't know about this move. Very nice. Now all of a sudden, <laughs> uh, like I'm on a very bad position. Okay, I did mid again, right? Okay, this was my planning. I was gonna do a low. I thought he wasn't gonna hit back. I was gonna do a down back three, get a big class, and then go into back turn. No. Guess what? He hits back. KO. So I died. Round four. I mean, okay. So uh and then I was like, okay, okay, that's fine, that's fine. I'm all, all good, all good. I can still win. And I did hit him with a back uh, again, my my execution problem. This is crazy. I never did I don't know why he did the well sending like the big launchers, very slow launcher there. That's just something very, very crazy. My best guess is that because I never did anything, that would have provoked him to even do that ever. Like if he did well, uh, well sending one, two, I can respect that. But I don't really know why he would have done that there, right? My best guess is that why not? He's winning. Or I don't know, you know? But he got caught by the down forward 2 2. Well, 2 2. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Director. It was. So I got a bit of damage there. I'll, I'll say about 60 something. Very smart. I don't know how he figured that one out. <laughs> Man, okay. Here's the thing. I thought if I just bait his uh, rage drive out, I'm definitely gonna win this round. And the next round, I'll, I'll cash in on everything I have received. Like all the information I collected on him. But guess what? I didn't, fuck, I, I didn't get to the final round. <laughs> oh my god. Saka Sophia initiated. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> this is the downfall. I did a fucking long and suck. Okay, I was like, okay, okay. He threw the fucking rage draft. Now it's my turn. So I thought I never challenge. Let me challenge here. That's all right. He didn't do anything. And I was like, okay, he comes in. I'm gonna do one, two, uh, uh, keep out, and I'm gonna do rage shoulder. I'm just gonna waste a little bit of time and do rage drive shoulder. Baden, Baden. And guess what? Fuck. He did a throw. I, I wasn't breaking it. I, you heard me. I, I tried to. It's a right throw. I know it's a right hand throw. I didn't break it. <laughs> then I got up and panicked. I mean, it's a 50 50 situation. There's no other mix ups. So, so I just panicked shoulder. If he sized over anything, I could have caught him. But, uh. <laughs> oh my god, I couldn't bring it to the final, final round. Look. Hypo hy hypothetically, if I go to the final final round, what am I gonna do is the very beginning of the game, I'm gonna go in back turn sweeping. I'm hundred percent sure he's gonna eat it. I'm gonna carry him to the wall, and then guess what? I'm gonna size it for him. That was my that was totally my game plan. Because everything I did was for that final final round. This is the only way to beat him. Because his reaction is really fast and he's a smart player. So you have to like heavily condition him. That's the only way to beat him. And he always, he, I feel that sometimes he has an instinct. Like there's no reason to do something, but he will just know. I don't have that kind of instinct because I mostly play based on analysis, based on uh, rational calculation. 
But there are players who are more towards the instinct kind of side. It's not to say that I never have an instinct. Sometimes I have instinct too. But from what I can see is that most of the time, and I use my rationale more than instinct. It's only because I don't get that instinct. Uh, if I could get the instinct, that would I would play with my instinct. But I just don't get a lot of instinct. So I got used to analyze, condition, and using strategies, and using check and tests, and play the spacing game, forcing my opponent to get into my comfort zone. So that's usually how I play. Some people play from heart, some people play from head, other plays on the astral plan, we can't comprehend. <laughs> people say, throws aren't as important anymore, but that's a situation where a throw put someone risk and more. Yeah, I mean, look, he did a very unusual throw. With Steve, usually people do one plus two. That's the most often throw that people would have done, right? Or they would do the stance throw, which is also one plus two. Or they could do normal throw. But in this instinct, he did the special throw, which is which still is a two break, I believe. Um, but I was thinking, like the last thing I was expecting was that throw. And Saga did exactly the last thing that I thought he was going to do. So that was a very smart decision for him. Like losing to Saga, there's nothing I could say about it. He, he was the better player on that day. As he... Um, later on proved himself again and again to the grand final and he almost reset as well so um again like i've always said that saga is one of the uh, players that i really really uh think that he has the potential so in my opinion in new zealand right now there are especially three players like they're not new but they are i think they 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 have the potential to be in the or some of them have already proved that they will be one day in the top uh like really really top layer of uh competitors that is direction trump shredder and saga and this is exactly why uh i want to see them playing against each other so i think these three players have a lot of potential and they are the new future of new zealand Tekken after uh dan banta and wowzer okay and i'm an old fart so whatever, I just play. If I win, I win. If I lose, I don't give a fuck, right? So um, yeah, so that's it for me for my analysis today. Uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed my analysis. Saga so Shredder too scary. But you're scary too. I think I'm most scared of you. Then I'm scared. I'm most scared of Saga. Then it's Shredder. <laughs> that is my personal kind of, yeah. That is my personal kind of tier list. So, uh, you're both actually really scary. That's a half kappa, by the way. Half kappa. Half kappa. Have I, have I ever played half kappa? That's only half kappa, by the way. They're both actually really scary. What, what does a half kappa mean? I don't even understand what that means. Kappa is the emoji rainbow. Oh, right. Of course. Okay, okay, I see, I see. Yeah, I mean, um, I hope that my analysis makes sense. Again, the reason why I'm doing this analysis... Um, oh, Kappa means you're joking. No, I'm not joking, you are scary, man. No joking. Um, and I think, even though, initially I thought, oh, you take a lot of risks and you do a lot of minus button. But the more I play you, the more I think that you do them calculated. You don't do them like all the time because I checked it again and again and again. You always know, like mo for most part, when I am like trying to check and when I'm trying to like, okay, this is the time now. Like if you were just doing it mindlessly, you wouldn't be able to um, call me out on these moments where I think it's time for me to go in. Instead, when I check, you don't do a lot of stuff. When I try to go in, um, like you caught me a lot. So this can't be just random, you know what I mean? The difference between being random and being not random is that if someone is actually random, they won't last long. They, they After a few checks, you know, their pattern will come up. But where is a, a, a player who actually thinks a lot in trying to adapt, they change. You check, they change. They, they, you check again, they change again, you know? So um, 
that is a very big difference between a true random player and a player that just likes to take a little bit more risks and has a lot of instinct to it. Like I can't explain to you instinct because I get them sometimes too, and I seriously can't tell you why. I mean, it could be just from experience. It could be just like he's probably gonna do that because that's the most logical or most, I guess, like expected thing to do, right? Um, yeah. I mean, humans. I think. Uh, I I think humans can be irrational and can just have an instinct. Like you know how you even the detectives sometimes they just have a hunch. And why exactly do they have this hunch? Nobody knows. And and a lot of times their hunch is correct. So I guess you can have the hunch, but you just need to test it out, right? If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. If it works, hey, hooray! Uh, that is my understanding. Yeah, I think people have developed that institution. That's exactly right. Like Tekken, even though is a rational game, but nothing is purely rational. There's no way you can play something pure because you're not a robot. No, I'm sorry, my friend. No quick matches today. Today I want to actually spend my limited time to play some、uh, Hitman Forty Seven because、uh, I I I I only slept about five hours. For the last two days, so I want to actually sleep a bit early today, and I want to play maybe two two and a half hours of Hitman Forty Seven today. So I promise just to analyze my games, and then that's it for me for today. But I might play tomorrow. So anyway, thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. <laughs> I was to see your match, <laughs> but hey, if if it was helpful. Okay, cool, man.、Uh, I'll try to.、Uh, I I need to go to the gym tomorrow. So when I come back, if I feel like feel energetic, I'll play. I mean, hey, I don't think it's a waste of time. And hopefully, it wasn't a waste of time. Hopefully, that you guys enjoyed. Uh, you know what I have to say about my games, and hopefully, the analysis helps people to gain a new perspective of、uh, how like different ways of、uh, approach. Uh, take an、uh, approach, uh, different strategies to win. Okay, so thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in once again, and thank you for the follow.、Uh, and、uh, I'll see you、uh, next time. Thanks, guys. Oh, actually, you know what? Before that, let me hold someone. I'm so sorry. I need to learn to hold someone. Okay, let me hold. Oh, I, 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 sorry. Okay, just、uh, direct shot. Just because、uh, symbolic is playing、uh, Tekken, I'm just gonna host him. Okay. You want me to host direct, or do you want me to host a、uh, symbolic stream direct? Okay, okay, that's fine. If、uh, okay, cool. We'll do. We'll do. If you guys want to watch Resident Evil. Resident Evil Seven. How's it sounding, by the way? I hope everything's like all good. How's it sounding, by the way? Oh, hey, Holy Infra, thanks for the、uh, highest man. Ah,、uh, you got, you just called me at a good time. We're just about to start day two, day two of、uh, of Resident Evil Seven. Ah.、Uh,